Now, before I get into the video, I understand that these types of games are praised upon by a whole community. I'm simply expressing my thoughts, but I'm also trying to tell everybody that these games are not as great as they seem. But you know what? Feel free to fact check me, okay? Because I've only played a handful of these games, so I might be wrong about a couple of things. But after playing Lies of P, I gotta say, it's 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 pretty bad. So Lies of P is the new Souls like game. And for anyone that's new to my channel, you know I do not like Souls like games. I think they are the most miserable types of games on the planet. There's enjoying a challenge in a video game, and then there's this, which takes it to a whole other unworldly level. Like, if these games were a subject from school, I'm pretty sure it would be Algebra 2. Making things complicated, making things way more difficult than it already has to be. Now, before I get into all my negatives, let me list like three pros I got about the game. And I guess for all Souls games. One, the scenery, the world building, all the design stuff, amazing. You could definitely see how they've aged throughout the years. But it's a video game. I'm here to play. I'm here to game. The gameplay, whew. But anyways, now I want to talk about the interface. You got your HP and stamina on the top left. You got your inventory and weapons in the bottom left. Oh, and they also gave you a puppet string. I guess that's like an enhancement. I mean, it doesn't enhance really anything. But um, then in the top right, you got your currency to level up. And then in the bottom right, you got your special attacks. So special my ass, they did like no damage. And don't even come to me being like, oh, you have to upgrade it. Yeah, it should still do damage. So we got the interface out of the way. It's not too hard to understand. Obviously, the more Souls games I played, the more I was able to understand the interface. So nothing crazy different here, but um, still pretty fresh. Oh, sorry if I sound sick, by the way. It's, it's getting close to fall. Now moving on to the controls. I have never been a fan of the controls in this game. I mean, in this game to sprint, you got to hold a... The uh, B button on Xbox and press the, or yeah, hold the left joy joystick forward. It does have those RPG-like mechanics where you hold RB and RT to do attacks. But um, LT is actually where you use the uh, the robotic arm thingy. Anyways. You know, when you start out one of these games, they give you a cutscene, they throw you right in, you get your weapon, and you smash and bash. Now, I went with the heavy strength route because I like to do a lot of damage, which I do like that the game lets you pick your playstyle. You know, I start to make my way through a couple of enemies, light attacks, heavy attacks, no problem. Now, why does this game not have a map, or at least one I'm not able to use at the time i i don't know apparently these games think that they're clever my uh my first experience with this issue was in bloodborne and i quit because like if you can't give me a goddamn map then you're you're just trying at that point to be a bad game oh but the challenge of finding and seeking shit yeah you could still do that but if i'm trying to get through the main objective can, can i please like get get a map to help me get there because damn so, some of the open worlds be pretty Pretty big, especially when you're in like cities and it's, you know, linear-ish. But you know, I, I get the checkpoints or the, you know, the resting areas, um, which I'm glad they brought that back. And then we go into the circus puppet first boss fight. Now, what I learned from Elden Ring is that the first boss is the beginner learner boss. Beginner learner boss my ass, bro. Why am I having such a hard time with a beginner learner boss when this is the first boss and I've got like hell knows how many more to go? It's like if I can't get past this, I I'm, I'm sure as hell not going to beat the game. So I go into the boss fight, you know, I walk in, cutscene plays, pre pretty cool, right? Pretty dramatic, scary. Um, 
you know, it, I'm not going to be mad if I die the first time because you're not going to beat a boss on your first try. I'm just trying to learn his moves and see what I can do. I get a pre pretty decent chunk of the health down, at least until he gets into his second phase, where his insides start to burn and then he brings out this long-range weapon. And that's when all shit goes to hell. Now, in the bottom right, they give you, like, a weapon durability thing. And if you get away from the enemy, you can, like, sharpen it to, you know, reuse that durability. Well, what good is the durability if the enemy, the big boss man, is breaking through all of my attacks? Not all of them, but, I mean... When it's not a heavy attack, he's still able to, like, break through for, like, no reason. And I'm keeping track. I'm looking at the bottom right to see when I need to, like, actually start dodging. That doesn't work for very long. I die. I die, I die, I die again. Not to say I ever had any high expectations for this game, because you know what? I thought it looked cool. It's based on Pinocchio, but it's a Souls-like game, so I was like, why not? I've had some experience with them, not the best, but I've had some experience with them. I was at least hoping it could give me a better, non-less miserable experience. And guys, this is not just about Lives of P. This is for every single Souls-like game. They are far from the greatest games ever made. They are miserable to play. They gotta be so hard for no reason. And if you enjoy that type of shit, uh... Good for you, buddy. And I want to like these games. I, I really do, because I see all the hype behind them, like Elden Ring, but then I just get disappointed. And then I ask well, why these are so praised to the highest degree. And like I said, feel free to comment down below anything that I didn't touch on. Peace.